Dobro jutro. Veleke je privilegija gorete govoriti pred vama danas. Dali zem i pričam u ima Isusa Histra. Moje srpski ne je dobro tako da ću govoriti ingleski. To je to. Thank you for giving me the privilege, and Brother Peter for giving me the privilege to speak to you this morning. I told my wife this morning that there is a, always an inner urge to preach the Word of God. It is the most exciting thing that I could ever do. To je najuzbudljivija stvar koju bih ikada želeo da radim. So I come to you this morning in great humility. Dolazim danas pred vas u velikoj poniznosti. But with great power from the word of God. Ali sa velikom silom iz reči Božje. I want to begin this morning with asking you a, a pretty simple question. Želim da počnem tako što ću vas pitati, tako što ćemo posjetiti jedno jednostavno pitanje. How many of you have ever been afraid? Koliko vas se ikada nečega plašilo bi? Oh, come on. Ajde, ajde. Let's try that again. Ajmo ponovo. How many of you have ever been afraid? Koliko se vas ikada plašilo nečega? To je već bolje. Fear is something that all of us experience one time in our life or another. Strah je nešto što svi u jednom ili drugom trenutku izpustimo u svojim životima. When I was a little boy, kada sam bio deča, my sister took me to the movie theater. Sestra me je odvela u bioskop. That particular afternoon, the movie was about, it was a scary movie. Tog popodneva davao se neki strašan horror film. The plot was about a mad scientist who was, built this monster. Zaplet je bio o jednom ludom naučniku koji je napravio svoje čudovište. I was probably about seven or eight years of age. Ja sam imao nekih sedam, osam godina. And during the movie, that monster scared me deeply. I u toku tog filma jako sam se uplašio tog čudovišta. To this day, I can tell you what that monster looks like. Do danas znam kako to čudovište izgleda. In fact, I don't watch horror shows today because of that. Zbog toga čak ni danas ne gledam horror filmove. I will never forget that movie because of the fear that it instilled in me. Nikada neću zaboraviti taj film zbog straha koji se ureza u mene. I'm afraid of the dark because of that. Zbog toga se plašim i mraka. We all have fears. I also have a fear of heights. Svi imamo svoje strahove. Ja se također plašim i visine. I have a fear of snakes. Plašim se i zmija. I don't think we should have snakes as pets. It's not God. Mislim da ne treba da imamo zmije kao kućne ljubice. To nije pobožno. And I'm sure your list could go on and on as well. I siguran sam da i vaši spiskovi bi mogli da dodaju nešto. Being afraid is a normal feeling. To što se plašimo je uobičajeno, normalno osjećanje. But there's a difference between being afraid of something and being fearful of something. Ali imati strah od nečega i plašiti se nečega je različito jedno od drugog. Being afraid of something is healthy. It keeps us from burning ourselves on the stove or driving in or walking in front of a car and getting run over. Plašiti se je nešto što je zdravo. To je to razprečava da se na primjer upečemo na vruću ringu ili da ili da da nas pregazi auto. But fear can steal us of our spiritual joy. Ali strah je nešto što može da nam krade našu duhovnu radost. And fear comes in many different packages. Strah se javlja u mnogo različitih pakovanja, ambalaža. For some of us, fear of change is a big deal. Za neke od nas strah od promjene je nešto što je da strašno. Changes in your family. Promjene u porodici. Changes in your country structure. Promjene u strukturi vaše zemlje, uređenju. Cultural changes. Kulturološke promjene. And on and on. I to se nastavlja. 
Uh, can you imagine if change would have never happened what the church would look like today? Možete li da zamislite kako bi crkva danas izgledala da nikada nije bilo nikakvih promjena? Some 400 years ago, a man by the name of, name of Martin Luther, prije nekih 400 godina, čovjek po imenu Martin Luther, stood for a huge change in the church. Je ustao i izazvao velike promjene u crkvi. And today we sit here as Protestants because of what he did in changing the church. I zbog toga mi danas ovdje sedimo kao protestanti zbog onoga što je on uradio u u crkvi. So fear of change. So fear of change. Tako da da strah od promjena. Also the fear of the unknown. To a da idemo na strah od nepoznatog. Many people today are afraid of the gospel. Mnogi ljudi danas se plaše evanđelja. Because they don't hear what the word has to say. Zato što oni ne slušaju ono što reč ima da kaže. And they refuse to adhere to the scripture. Oni odbijaju da se drže pisma. Because of change. Zbog promjene. And there's also a fear of the future. Također postoji strah od budućnosti. Thousands of people are very concerned about when Jesus is going to come back. Hiljade ljudi se brine o tome kada će se Isus vratiti. How will he come and when will he come? Kako će doći i kada će doći? People are concerned about the future of how will we pay our bills? Ljudi se brinu kako će u budućnosti platiti svoje račune. How can I afford to go to university? What classes will I take? Kako mogu da platim svoje školovanje na fakultetu? Koje predmete da uzmem? How can I afford the ties to the church? Kako mogu da priuštim sebi da plaćam desetak crkvi? You younger people, the fear of the unknown of whom am I going to marry? How many children will we have? Mladi ljudi se pitaju za koga ću se dati, odnosno koga ću ženiti, koliko ćemo deci imati. One thing I have learned personally about fear is that it is not from God. Because the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. And that is what fear does. It confuses us. I tell you all of that because in 2 Timothy, Chapter one. That's kind of what's happening in Timothy. To vam govorim zato što u drugoj Timoteju prvo poglavlje upravo se tako nešto njemu dešava. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Second Timothy? Sa vama imate vaše Biblije okrenite na drugu Timoteju samo. Chapter one. Drugo prvo poglavlje. We're going to look at about eight verses here and walk through them and talk about. Prođi ćemo kroz nekih osam stihova i razgovarat ćemo o njima. I want to first tell you about two people that are paramount in this passage. Prvo, dakle, želim da vam kažem nešto o dvoj ljudi koji se spominju u ovom odloku. Timothy and Paul. To su Timote i Pavle. So let's first talk about Timothy. Hajmo prvo nešto o Timoteju. We believe Timothy was about 30 years of age during this time. Verujemo da je Timote imao nekih 30 godina u ovo vreme. He was the pastor of the church in Ephesus. On je bio pastor crkve u Efesu. Paul thought so much of Timothy in the very first in the first book of Timothy in chapter one verse two. He says, "My true son in the faith." Pavle je o Timoteju mislio kao o svom istinskom sinu u veri, što kaže u prvoj Timoteju, prvo pogledaj drugi stih. Timothy was raised in a home where his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois were Christians, were believers, but his father was a Greek and an unbeliever. Dakle, Timotej je odrestao u kući gde su njegova baka Ernika i Baka Loida i majka Ernika bile hrišćanke, a njegov otac je bio Grk i nije bio Bernik. So, the town of Ephesus was a pagan city. Grad Ephesus je bio paganski grad. And we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3 that certain men were teaching false doctrines and devoting themselves to spiritual myths. U prvoj Timoteju 1.3 kaže nam se da su oni tamo praktikovali lažne doktrine i posvećivali se lažnim mitovima. And again in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 6 
Paul writes to Timothy, he says, again, there are those who worm their way into homes. So, so Timothy's call to preach the truth to these kinds of people is very difficult. So you can imagine Timothy's trouble in his mind and in his heart of having to undergo that kind of persecution. So Paul writes to this young Timothy these two letters to encourage him. And in the very first few verses that's exactly what Paul is doing. Now let me tell you about Paul for a moment. We know Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter. He was bound in chains. Uh, we, we know that prison was a dark, cold dungeon. Uh, his death was coming soon. And yet Paul, in his understanding of God's grace, no, ipak, Pavle, pošto je dobro razumeo Božju milost, was still able to encourage young Timothy. Još uvek je mogao da ohrabri mladog Timoteja u njegove veri. I don't know about you, but if I was in a cold, dark dungeon, ne znam za vas, ali da sam ja u jednoj hladnoj, mračnoj tamnici, locked in chains, da sam u lancima, the last thing I would do is probably write a letter of encouragement to anyone. Posljednje što bih radio jeste da pišem pismo hrabrenja nekome. But then I'm like Paul. Ali ja nisam Pavel. So let's read this together. Hajmo da zajedno ovo pročitamo. And if you want to let Tadora read, if you will. I te ja ću nam pročitati ako želi. Želi. Okay. 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 Pavle Božijom voljom apostol Hrista Isusa u skladu s obećanjem života koje je u Hristu Isusu, Timote i u dragom sinu, milost, milosrđe i mir od Boga Otca i Hrista Isusa naše gospoda. Zahvaljujem Bogu kome kao i moji preci čiste savesti služim dok te neprestano i noću i danju pominjem u svojim molitvama. Kad se sedim tvojih suza poželim da te vidim da se ispunim radošću. Sećam se tvoje nelicebedne vere, koja je najprej prebivala u tvoje baki Loidi, u tvojoj majci Evnici, a uverujem sam da je sada i tebi. Zato te podsjećam, rasplamsaj milostni dar koji ti je Bog dao kada sam na tebe položio ruke, jer Bog nam nije dao duha plašljivosti, nego sile, ljubavi i razboritosti. Stoga nema da se stidiš se do čanstva našem gospodu, ni meni njegovog služnja, nego pripruži mi se Let me pray, please. Would you bow your heads? Father God, this morning we open your word and read it. We understand it to be alive and active. That its message to us is clear. May we hear the message. Apply to our lives according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to look this morning in this verse, verse 6, and that's kind of where I want to kind of camp for a moment. Paul writes to stir the gift of God within. Pavle kaže, dakle, rasplamsaj milost i dar koji ti je Bog dao. The King James Version says it this way, stir that sacred flame that is within you. Jedan od prevoda engleskih kaže, rasplamsaj taj svet i žar koji je u tebi. 
And what Paul is saying is, Timothy, don't try to stir yourself up within yourself. Timothy, don't reach within yourself in your own power. But he tells Timothy instead to stir up the gift of God that is within you. On uh, umjesto toga govori Timotej da raspamsta milost i dar koji mu je Bog dao. And you can see the difference as we speak about it. I možete dakle već dok govorimo o tome da vidite razliku. We allow the fear that we talked about earlier to invade our souls and our hearts. Mi dozvoljavamo da taj strah o kome smo ranije govorili i prosto nas obuzme na naše srce. And the battle is over. But when we stir that sacred flame within us, that gift of God of salvation within us, then the strength does not come from within ourselves, but it comes by the power of God. And then when we do that, we have the power to go out and do anything that God calls us to do. I kada to uradimo, onda imamo snagu, silu da uradimo bilo šta na što nas Bog poziva. And we become very excited about Jesus. I tada postajemo vrlo revni, uzbuđeni za Isusa. Because we are operating not from our power, but from His power. Zato što tada funkcionišemo ne na našoj sobstvenoj snazi, već na njegovoj. But when we allow fear to come, ali kada dozvolimo da se uguče strah, and to plant thoughts in our heads and within our hearts the enemy comes and invades us and takes over and we lose and, and we lose and defeat every time. That is why Paul told Timothy to reach within yourself and find that gift of God within you. When you received Jesus Christ. I, I, I love the verse that says, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. To je to sad isti taj stih u nekom drugom prevodu. Ja imam samo jedan, tako da sviđamo se kako to zbuči. So let me, sp let me stay for just a moment on that verse, because I, I want to explain the word gift. Uh, zdržat ću se neko vreme na tom stihu, zato što želim da objasnim tu reč dar. Uh, gift refers, uh, refers to the giving of the gospel. Dar uh, podrazumeva davanje evanđelja. It's talking about what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Romans 6.23 For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What that says for you and I is that, it, that we all stand guilt, guilty before a holy God. Ono što to govori o svima nama jeste da svi mi stojimo krivi pred Bogom. The Bible clearly teaches that we all deserve death and hell. Biblija jasno podučava da svi mi zaslužimo smrti pakao. But Romans 5.8 says that but God demonstrated his love for us. A Rimenima 5.8 kaže da je Bog pokazao svoj ljubav za nas. While we were still sinners. Christ died for us. That gives us salvation. It gives us hope. It gives us eternal life. And that is the gift that Paul is talking to Timothy about. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Uh, 
Pročitaćemo do 39. stiha. Kada su to čuli potreseni u srcu, rekoše Petru i ostalim apostolima, šta da radimo braćo? A Petar im reče, pokajte se i neka se svaki od vas krsti u ime Isusa Hrista za oproštenje svojih greha i primit ćete dar svetog duha, jer to je obećanje za vas i za vašu decu i za sve koje su daleko, koje naš Bog pozove k sebi. Notice the word there in that passage, the word gift again. It's God graciously reaching down. And calling mankind to himself. There's nothing you can do. Doesn't how much doesn't matter how much money you do or don't have. It doesn't matter uh, uh, what kind of environment you live in. It is by God's grace that we receive the gift. Amen. 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 The, the Greek word in this uh, passage in Timothy, when he says fan into flame, lends a thought to the fact that maybe, just maybe, se javlja, dakle, raspravljaj taj milosni dar, se odnosi na to, da možda... It lends the idea to Timothy needing to rekindle a dying flame. Da možda Timothy treba da rasplamsa plamen koji polako onako počinje da tinja, zapravo da se gasi. And because of that kind of language, we understand that Timothy may have been struggling a bit. I zbog takvog jezika mi zaključujemo da Timotej možda prolazi kroz neke probleme. No wonder with the environment that he was in. Nije ni čudo s obzirom na okruženje u kojem se nalazio. Living in a pagan city. Živeo je u paganskom gradu. Had issues within the church that he was the pastor of. Imao je problema u crkvi u kojoj je bio pastor. Maybe he was just not very encouraged. Možda nije bio ohrabren. And his flame was beginning to light. And Paul says, Timothy, rekindle this gift. Rekindle the gift that God has given you so that others might see. Timothy, use the, the, the gift that God has given you so those in the church and so that those outside the church can know what you know about Jesus Christ. There is a, there's an inward spiritual question here that we have to answer. The, the question is, can you or I Pitanje je, da li možemo vi ili ja, or could Timothy, i da li mogao Timotej, reach within himself, da dosegne u sebe, da li mogao da dosegne u sebe, and motivate himself for the gospel. I da motiše sebe za evanđelje. The answer is found in verse 7 of 2 Timothy 1. A odgovor pronalazimo u 2 Timotej 1, 7. Paul writes three things here, and he says the first thing is power, and then the power that Paul is speaking of is that power from God. And then the second thing Paul mentions here is love, and that is only God's love. You and I can't stir that within ourselves. That only comes from God. Vi i ja ne možemo to da raspalimo u sebi, to dolazi samo od Boga. But the third thing Paul mentions here is self-discipline. Ali treća stvar koju Pavle ovde pominje je razboritost, odnosno samodisciplina. If I was to look that up in a dictionary, in the spiritual language. Kada bih to hteo da pronađem u rečniku duhovnih reči, it would literally mean taking personal responsibility and exercising individual control. To bi doslovno značilo... Okay. It would mean taking personal responsibility. Znači, uzimanje... To bi značilo uzimanje lične odgovornosti. And exercising individual control. 
i praktikovanje pojedinačne kontrole. So for the Christian, the motivation and the power comes from the power of God and the love from God. Tako da za hrišćina motivacija i sila dolazi iz sile i ljubavi Božije. But it becomes our responsibility ali naša odgovornost postaje to take action da delamo to be self-disciplined da budemo samodisciplinovani to follow the commands of Christ i da sledimo Hristove zapovesti. You can't just go sit in a, in a dark room and hope all of that happens. Ne možete samo sedeti u jednoj zamračenoj prostoriji i nadati se da će se sve to desiti. Paul is encouraging Timothy to live that way Pavle ohrabruje Timotea da živi na takav način to stir that gift within him, the gift of God, to be the pastor, the Christian that God's called him to be. In other words, good, obedient choices equals God's positive action. Sa Božim pozitivnim delovanjem involved in our lives. Koje je uključen koje je uključen u naše živote. Um, there are some there are some things that seem to quench our fire if you will. Postoje neke stvari koje se čine da gase našu vatru ako možemo tako reći. So I want to share just a few of those things with you this morning. Želim da podelim neke od tih stvari sa vama ovog jutra. The first thing that can quench your fire is sin. Prva stvar koja može ugasiti vašu vatru je greh. Ezekiel 33:10 says this. Ezekiel 33:10 kaže sledeće. Our offenses and sins weigh us down. Kaže prestupi naši gresi naši na nama su i s njih propadamo. And we are wasting away because of them. I s njih propadamo. There's a lot of truth in saying I don't I don't know how this translates to you and to your culture, but uh, we say this in, in, in America often, and it says, your sins will find you out. The truth is, sin looks good for a while. Prava istina je da greh neko vreme izgleda privlačno. But only for a season. Ali samo na kratko vreme. Sooner or later they will catch up to you. Pre ili kasnije oni će vas sustići. And sin will always take you where you don't want to go. Greh će vas uvek odvesti tamo gde ne želite da odete. And keep you there longer than you want to stay. I držat će vas tamo duže nego što želite da budete tamo. And while you are in the midst of that kind of living, i dok živite takvim životom, your fire is not burning bright. Vaša vatra neće goreti najvećim žarom. That is why Paul encourages Timothy to stir the flame. I zato Pavle okrabruje Timoteja da rasplamsa taj žar. Of God within. Žar Boga u njemu. Another area that kills us is the idea of neglect. Druga ideja koja nas koja čini da da ovaj se gasi taj plamen je ideja za nemarivanje. It will it will put out your fire very quickly. Ona će ugasiti vašu vatru vrlo brzo. When my children and I have two. Two children. Kad smo moja žena i ja imali dvoje smo imali dvoje dece. They are grown now. Oni su sad odrasli. But when they were small, little little kids. Ali kad su oni bili mala deca. We like to go camping. Voljeli smo da idemo da kampujemo. When we would go camping, we would put the tent up. Kad smo išli da kampujemo, tamo bi smo podigli šator. And I would do the manly thing and build the fire. I a ja bih radio muške poslove i zapalio bih vatru. There's something powerful about building a fire. Ima nečeg moćnog, snažnog u paljenju vatre. And so my job the entire evening was to keep the fire burning bright. I celo veče moj posao bi bio da održavam vatru da gori baš onako. So I would go and drag bushes and branches and cut them up and spend my whole evening. Tako da bih ja celo veče odlazio, pronalazio granje i žbunove. Building this huge, huge fire. I 
onda bi ih sve to bacalo u veliku, veliku vatru. But when it was time to go to bed, ali kada je bilo vreme da idem da spavam, we would all get in the tent, svi bi smo ušli u šator, and go to sleep. i spavali bi se. And the fire would die down. I vatra bi se ugasila. Because I wasn't putting wood on it, I wasn't putting fuel on it. Zato što je, nisam stavljao nikakvu gorivo, nikakvu drvo na nju. And that is the same way with the word of God. I isto uh, to se dešava sa Božjom rečem. When we refuse or neglect to put the word of God in our hearts and in our minds. Kada zanemarimo, odnosno odbijemo da stavljamo Božju reč u naše, u naše umove, the fire will burn low. Some of you here today probably never read the Bible on your own. If this is the only place you ever read the Bible, ako je ovo jedino mesto na kome ikada čitate Bibliju, is on Sunday morning. Uh, znači nedeljom ujutro. I will tell you that's not enough. Reći ću vam to nije dovoljno. The Bible says you need to meditate on it day and night. Biblija kaže da morate da razmišljate o njoj dan i noć. If the only person you ever hear read the Bible is your pastor. Ako jedina osoba od koje ikada čitate, čujete kako čita iz Biblije vaš pastor, it is not enough. To nije dovoljno. The Bible says you meditate on it day and night. Biblija kaže da treba da razmišljate o njoj dan noć. The Bible says that it is the Bible says it is living and active. Biblija kaže da je ona živa i delotvorna. It literally means that it is alive and breathing. To doslovno znači da je ona živa i da diše. Now obviously this is not alive. But it has the power to bring life to you. But you will have to read it for that to take place. Um, osmosis doesn't work. You can't take it home and put it on the shelf and hope that it speaks to you. It is alive and active when you open it. And you allow it to permeate your heart. It becomes a light to your path. And there are many, many promises in the Bible that tells us when we read it and live by it, blessings will follow. So don't neglect the word of God. Another area that tends to get in our way or quenches our fire are people. Na neki način hoće da ukasi našu vatru, jesu ljudi. There's an old saying that goes like this, it's hard to soar with eagles when it's, when you hang out with turkeys. Kaže, ima jedna isika koja kaže, teško je leteti sa orlovima kada se družite sa čurkama. Who you run around with, who you hang out with makes a difference. I'm not saying we shouldn't run around with lost people. But be very careful that you hang out with people who will encourage you in the faith. When our habits become like the world, then we look like the world and people think we are the world. There must be something different about me and you when we call ourselves Christians. And people out there need to see that. Another area is fear. We talked about fear at the beginning of our talk this morning. 
Na početku smo već razgovarali o strahu, to je još jedna oblast. And from verse 7 here in our passage we find Timothy struggling with his confidence. U sedmom stihu dakle vidimo da se Timotej ovdje bori sa sa bori se. Fear to do that. A strah to može da uradi čovjek. Paul tells Timothy, don't be timid. Pavle kaže Timoteju, ne budi plašljiv. Don't be fearful. Nemoj, nemoj se plašiti. Don't be shy. Nemoj stiljiv. He says, fan into flame the gift that is, in, that is within you and testify about Jesus Christ. On kaže, raspali taj plamen koji ti je Bog dao i svedoči o Isusu Hristu. Folks, here's the truth. Narode, sljedeća je istina. The world is dying to hear what we know. Svet umire za tim da čuje ono što mi već znamo. And each of you have been given a gift. I svakom od vas dat je dar. For those of you who know Christ as Savior. Za one od vas koji imate Hriste kao svoj spasitelj. And we are commanded to share that gift. I nam je zapoveđeno da dajemo taj dar, da delimo taj dar. To fan into flames the gift in our hearts. Da raspaljujemo taj dar u našim srcima. To not be timid. Da ne budemo plašljivi. To not be shy. Da ne budemo stiljivi. To not be fearful. Da se ne plašimo. But to go into all the world. Već da idemo celom svetu. And share this wonderful gift. I da delimo taj predivan dar. With those who you know. Sa onima koje poznajemo. Every person in this congregation this morning knows someone who doesn't know Jesus as Savior. It is not just my job. It is not just your pastor's job. To share this gift. Every one of us here are commanded to go and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Svakome od nas u kojoj smo ovdje zapoveđeno je da idemo i da delimo dobru vest o Isusu Hristu. Možda ćete reći, pa ja ne znam kako se to radi. A ja ću reći, Boga mi znate. Zato što imate sredočanstvo. Kada je Isus došao u vaš život, You received this gift. And all you have to do is tell what happened in your life. When you received this gift. And that is the best testimony in the world. Paul told Timothy. To reach within yourself. <laughs> da dosegne u sebe i da pronađe taj dar koji mu je Isus dao. Da ga rasplansa, da raspali plamen i da ga učini taj plamen veliki. Neka on sa velikim žarom pati u vama so that others might see. Da bi drugi njega vidjeli. So that all the world can know Jesus Christ is Lord. Da bi ceo svijet poznao Krista kao svog spasitelja. Would you please bow your heads and let me pray for you this morning. Da bi ste pogledali glave da se pomole za vas ovog jutra. Father, thank you for the gift of Christ that is within us. Oče, zahvaljujemo ti za dar Krista koji je u nama. Lord, I pray for those who know this gift in here this morning. Gospode, molim se za one koji nemaju taj dar ovoga jutra. I pray that every person here who knows Christ molim za sve one koji znaju Hrista will look within themselves da će je pogledati u sebe and by the power and the love that God has given us i da će po sili i ljubavi koje nam je Bog dao that we would take responsibility da ćemo preuzeti odgovornost and stir this gift up i da ćemo rasplansati ovaj dar. So that we might be found faithful. Da bismo mogli biti verni. In living out our faith. U življenju naše vere. Father, I bless every person here this morning. Oče, blagoslovi svaku osobu ovdje ovoga jutra. 
who knows you as Lord and Savior. Father, for, if there's someone here this morning who does not know you as personal Lord and Savior, that the only response is to say yes to Jesus. Lord, I, that you would forgive them of their sins and set them on the path of righteousness. And we give you the praise and the glory for all these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.